Hello, wonderful people. Here we are, Chapter 7. Section 7.5 is collisions. And there's two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. Let's see. What makes a collision elastic? That's when the two things do not stick together. They bounce off each other. So there's the equation, and you can see that there's the velocity of the first object and the velocity of the second object, and those are different. So just like in the little picture, bang. They collide, and then they keep going off in their own directions. Now that's one way to do it. Another way is the one object does not change their direction. So uh, direction matters. So you have to choose one side of the uh, one side positive and the other side negative. So if it's heading to the right, it's positive, or, or you could make it negative. It doesn't matter which. But once you choose, you have to stick with that throughout the whole problem. So if you choose to the right is positive, then anything going to the right is positive for that whole problem. Um, does that make sense? Hopefully. Then inelastic. That's where they collide and stick together. There's the equation, and you can see that the final equation has uh, one velocity, because they're stuck together. So they're going to be traveling at the same speed, and the masses will be added together. So bang, there's the classic example. Uh, then we also have the truck. Cling! Now they're stuck together, and away they go. So here's a classic problem. We've got a billiards balls, and we're going to ask you to identify the number and types of collisions in the animation below. So, bang. So, two collisions. There's the cue stick hitting the cue ball, and then as it zooms to the right, the cue ball hits the red and the blue balls. How about in this one? Bang. Did you see that the car actually hit the motorcyclist just before it got to the end of the dock? Let's see if I can do that one again. Oh, uh, back, back, back. There we go. Bang. So there's a collision between the motorcycle and the car, and then the motorcycle in the boat. <clears throat> um... Oh, this is a classic, and people do this in the real world all the time. You shoot something into a block that's sitting on a pendulum, then you measure how high the pendulum goes, and that tells you exactly how much energy went into it. So, turn on the laser so you know you're going to shoot right at the block. Bang. Yep, they do stuff like that all the time. So, what was the collision? The block, the, the bullet into the block. Here's our skateboarder. So that collision is inelastic. When the skateboarder, when the guy hits the skateboard, they stick together and move off. So what are the collisions here? Um, there's two. There's where the bang and bang. Uh, then there's the math problem. If the paddle is a half a kilogram traveling at this, and after the collision, how fast was the puck moving? Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do in the homework. And that was also in the big problem yesterday. So hopefully you know how to do those. Um, a couple more classic examples. Recoil. So that's just like the cannon and the cannonball type stuff. So if the gun is moving back with a mass and a velocity, and the bullet is moving forward with a mass and a velocity, based on the law of conservation of mass, we can figure out all of that. You just have to measure for one side of the equation. So measuring the mass of the bullet and the gun is easy, and at that point it's probably easier to measure the speed of the gun going backwards. And then there's the catapult down below. Wing. So did you see that the catapult moves backwards as the shot is fired off? So here's another good example 
We've got a bowling ball that weighs 10 kilograms and is moving at you at 10 meters per second. And uh, they shoot the gun where the bullet weighs a massive 1.1 kilograms, which is huge for a bullet, and a velocity of 95 meters per second. What type of collision is the one depicted here? So let's see. And what's the final velocity? Oh, do the, where's the, uh, oh, I thought we had an animation for the bowling ball. Oh, we do. I skipped over it. Here comes the bowling ball. There's the bullet. And it sends it backwards. Okay. So, there's the scene. What type of collision? Inelastic, because they stick together. And what's the final velocity of the bowling ball? We can solve that through the math of it all. Start with the equation on the right because the it's an inelastic collision so the velocity final of the bullet plus the bowling ball is just one velocity more examples of the truck moving away uh i'm not going to go through the math of this oh but i did want to show you now this is more complex than anything we're going to do but it is realistic that you should know how to do this. I'm not gonna ask that during chapter seven, but I'd like you to see this. So here we go. The ball gets hit. And now you have the cue ball moving off at a certain speed and an angle and the blue ball moving off at a speed and angle. And you can figure those out. So how do we do it? Well, we set up an X, Y axis. And we have the momentum going along the X. That was the initial momentum of just the cue ball. And then the momentum uh, after the collision. Oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. The P2 is the blue ball going into the pocket, and P1 is the cue ball going off. So those are both the final momentum. Those add up to the initial momentum, which is the light blue arrow. So can you see how if you took this vector and put it the tail of this to the head of this, it would point down, and they would both end up, that head would end up right there. And that's telling you that the initial momentum, which was that, equals the final momentum, which is those two vectors added up together. Now, the way you would do this math is you would divide it up into the x component and then the y components. And you can see that the y component, how far out it goes straight here, is the same as how far it goes straight out here. Because the y of this, which is positive, added with the y of this, which is negative, those y's are going to be equal and opposite. Um, and here is the same thing drawn out. There we go. So we take the final velocity of the blue ball, which is here, and we separate it into the X component and the Y component. And the same thing here. We have the X component and Y component of the cue ball. So now if you take this X component and put it head to toe with this X component of the blue ball, they will add up to be the same as the initial momentum of the cue ball. So then the angles, there's the theta and the alpha. Okay. Same idea here. We've got the bowling ball coming in, the bullet hits it, and the bullet plus the bowling ball go off at a different angle. So we draw an x and y axis with the origin at the point of collision. There was the initial momentum of the bowling ball coming in. There's the initial momentum of the bullet that was fired. So this total momentum is going to be conserved. There is the final momentum of the bowling ball and the bullet. So here is the initial momentum of I'm sorry, on the green line is the initial momentum of the bullet, and there's the initial momentum on the black line of the bowling ball. 
And if you take that vector of the bowling ball and you put the toe of that to the head of the green, it's going to point and they come together right at the same point, which tells you that momentum is conserved. The momentum before is this equals the momentum after, which is that plus that to the same point. Are you with me there? And then, like I said, we can do it in, we break it up into the X and Y component. So there's the, where's my pointer? The X component of the initial bullet, the Y component of the initial bullet. There's the final momentum, and it has an X component and a Y component. Uh, use those two separate angles. And there's the head to toe of the initial motion of the bowling ball. <clears throat> and that is what gets you to the same final point. Um, so the bowling ball hits the pin, they go off at an angle, same thing. Yeah, same thing. This one is more typical of what happens in the real world because people do this kind of accident reconstruction all the time. Okay, I think we'll call this good enough, although this is a cute little animation. She falls and Super Dude catches her. And, you can, and they ask you to figure out the vectors of that. Okay, so we do have homework. It's not as hard as this stuff that we just saw. Um, so please get that done. Remember there's a, a difference between elastic and inelastic, and that sets up the, the equation that you're going to use. And um, from there, I think we're good to go. So that's for Thursday. And then the very next thing I'm going to do is go find a, a online lab for us to do for tomorrow. Okay, good luck. Thanks for everything. Bye-bye.